very good, good afternoon to you. And of course, thank God it's Friday from the beautiful cold city of Enugu here in Nigeria. My name is Nnam Obaya, and a lot of reminiscing has been going on. I remember when I was young, there was this song, Waiting Day for Sokoto, a day for Shokoto, uh, that bag where you buy for Japan, a day for Aba. So really, growing up, Aba was supposed to be at par with all these places. You didn't need to go to Japan, China, the UK, US, Malaysia, or anywhere. You could get it in Aba. But things happened. Power issues, quality drops, political instability, insecurity, currency devaluation, successive governments not having any strategy geared towards Eastern manufacturing or Eastern business. And of course, like all things neglected, if you neglect a flower, it's either you know, wilts and dies away or weeds come and take whatever resources are meant for that particular plant. But in recent times, Aba seems to be having something of a resurgence and it seems to be leaving the other commercial hubs in the southeast behind and of course is acting as a catalyst and a driver to make Abia the flagship state of the southeast. What are the other governors doing and what can they learn from that? We'll be looking at that, that and uh, more today here. My name is Inam Diobaya. This is Nigeria. Quenu. The program, of course, is Nigeria Quenu on Afia Television, Channel 254 DSTV, Channel 17 on GoTV, and of course at Afia TV Official on all social media platforms, and of course live on YouTube and Facebook. Of course, like I told you, I'll be talking about the rise of ABA, the surge in productivity, the seeming turning around of the fortunes of the great manufacturing and commercial hub, the jewel, not just of the southeast, but of the sub-region, the sub-Saharan region. And of course, I wouldn't be able to do justice to it without talking to someone who, uh, just like me, was also on a sojourn of discovery in about to see what's happening there. I have well-traveled entrepreneur, Ozo Ojinaka, Kobino Madweke here with me. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon and good yeah, to have you here. Yeah, good that you people have me here. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you very much. <laughs> so about, about the time I was in Aba, you were in Aba at about the same time. And um, a, a, a lot of things, it seems as if um, there's something happening in Aba. Let's start with the reputation of made in Aba because the fortunes seem to have been going up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, just like made in China, once meant quack, now made in China is the standard. Mm -hmm. um, at a point in my life when I was younger, my dad is a medical doctor and was a Rotarian, or is a Rotarian. And there was a period where it was trendy among these professionals and these Rotarians to have special tailors in Aba that will come take your measurements and once you, you have to put a call through and your suit would arrive with a complimentary white shirt from Abba. Then it seems as if people stop doing that. People stop getting the Abba suits, you know. It's almost as if the quality was no longer what people wanted. Um, we had the Asian and Turkish uh, cheap alternatives flooding the markets everywhere. And this happened to a lot of other things, including shoes, slippers, and so much more. So what is it that causes Abba's reputation, you know, to sometimes be seen as the mecca of productivity and manufacturing. And, and sometimes people raise their eyebrows and say, I'll, I'll do Asia instead. Um, the attitude of people to start uh, rejecting uh, things from Abba, I think it stems from uh, some sort of colonial mentality thing because um, Abba is always known as the clothing capital of uh, Africa, oh. right, and um, a lot of things went wrong, you know, from the eastern Nigeria days of Michael Obara, that they saw a lot of potential in Abana, a couple of things were established then, but in the last 24 years, with the successive uh, three governments that have been there, there was zilch, oh. you know, it was really down. But uh, like you mentioned, our sojourn for one week in Abba. In fact, I am still awestruck oh. from what I saw. I was in Abba 12 years ago last, you know. I went to, uh, with my late wife to check out um, uh, how to make branded uniforms. Because then uh, with the hospitality thing in Enugu, uh, people were used to wearing white shirt and uh, black trousers. 
<laughs> that was just what everybody. Good. But I needed to have a niche. I needed to be different because we're always ahead. And uh, whatever we touch our hands, we try to be the first. So we were the first to brand uniforms in Enugu here. So we went to a bar and uh, the uniforms are still good. Mm. You know, they are still wearing good, you know. So to check out the quality 12 years ago. But like I said, a lot of things went wrong and um, people wanted to shift, you know, believing in Turkish, uh, Indian and all that coming from, in fact, Abba uh, is supposed to be the Taiwan mm. of Africa. You know, the productivity yeah. and uh, uh, industrialization of the place. So uh, that's basically what I think that went wrong. And, uh, but now I'm happy. People are proud. But also, I yeah. also notice that our mentality is still there because they would try in Abba. They are making things right there. But they are convincing you is made in a, a, some designer, you know. Because from what we saw, you know, yeah. the place we went to, yeah. and we saw that uh, the people that made the waistbands we're for the bo boxers yeah, were putting t shirts, yeah, 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 foreign yeah, labels. Design, foreign labels. And, and you notice the division of work. Yeah. Those people were making the body of the boxers, these people were making, making the waistbands. So they were making the labels, this and it. it's not. A one-man show mm. a division of labor and you cannot uh, say without you nobody else can move okay. you know you know and, and it's good you mentioned that because that that brings you know and we also have to talk about this uh, in cohesion with governance because you mentioned uh, governance I remember um, the day Alex Uti was sworn in mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine from Abia um, with no disrespect to everybody he's an older friend and um, he was struggling to hold back tears and he made a statement that resonated, you know, I kept thinking about it. He said, ah, finally, we have our first governor. You know, and that, that statement to me, I mean, I, I know some of the things um, Governor Ikpazu did in Aba in terms of some road infrastructure and one or two things. And I was surprised to hear him say that, you know. But it seems to be a sentiment that is uh, everywhere in the let's let's try and limit it to Abana. I won't yeah, yeah. go to the whole of Abia. Yeah. Um, the at the Abba Sports Club, the governor appeared for the investiture of the president, the and we president. saw the people's the new president, the new the 67th president, um, um, that's uh, Chris Agbo, and we saw the people's reaction yeah. to the governor. We also saw the governor not even allowed to leave, they stayed to dance in front of his car. Not governor give us money, but wait first. We want to dance for you before you go. And honor him. And honor him. And it, it, it makes you think, like, I've, I've been checking TV, checking radio. If I'm to be honest, even I myself sometimes get a bit frustrated with the media mechanism in Abia State about how difficult it is to get access to governors and commissioners there. But without much PR, there seems to be a lot of will I say love for the governor? And I don't want to do a campaign here. So what is it? I mean, why, if I'm to be honest, we're here in Enugu. Yeah. Governor Peter Amba is on a road construction spree. spree entering all nooks and Met crannies. Yeah, and metropolis and rural at the same time. Yeah. Governor Soludo is literally threatening contractors over quality of work in Anambra State. That's a story for <laughs> You know, but everybody is talking only about Abia Zone. Is it the lack because even Enugu had a few years of no stagnation. Yeah, so why is, why is there so much focus? Why is this the, the activity in Aba, the Aba Portacourt Road, the Aba Weary Road, the Aria Aria Market? Why are these developments? Um, why is the government getting so much plaudits? Mm. What's the difference between what they are doing and what other governments are doing in the Southeast? Okay. Um, Alex Oti, like you said, we are not holding brief for anyone here. Yeah. But Alex Oti is a seasoned, was a seasoned banker and uh, has been through the wrongs of uh, uh, business and entrepreneurship. And I guess he sat by, you know, this is not the first time he came for governorship. Mm. I think he's done it for 12 years now, you know. And he was getting in different parties, PDP, APGA, APGA then Labour. Labor. So, Labour was the uh, SPV. 
the special purpose vehicle that uh, most people used to enter into governance. And for him, he did not only start moving, but he hit the ground running, like a, a 100 meters dash. In fact, a lot of people were like, are you sure this man is going to you know, keep up with this pace? Because you see Kremberg, you see Julius Vega, you see uh, Arab contractors, Arab contractors and, CCC. Um, um, RCC and the, I don't even, I can't even mention all of them. But he's very serious and uh, I understand he got some loans, you know. Uh, I see it similar to what Peter B did uh, because they would negotiate and see where the grants and the loans are, you know, then bring it into the states. Uh, when uh, Peter B was the governor, and they would do projects that uh, marvel people. So, uh, the last 24 years in Abia State, honestly, uh, I don't want to look as if I'm putting it, but there was nothing, you know. So, uh, you see skits now that people are making. Alex, you tell us that Juju man that did this thing for you. <laughs> Where are you getting the money from to do this thing? Mm -hmm. And if you remember, on Friday at our basketball club, he said, I have only done 5% of, of what, what I intend to do. Mm -hmm. Abba, you ain't seen nothing mm -hmm. yet. And there was a massive <laughs> applause. You and know. I, you know, as you're talking, I picked up something, which is finance. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw the budgets for the different states in the southeast, uh, with the exception of Governor Wifuru of Eboy, um, Alex Oti of um, Abia, yeah. Popo Zodima, Imo, um, even um, Governor Peter Mbahe in Enugu. Everybody hit the 500 billion naira mark. But there was something about Alex Oti's budget presentation, a phrase he made. Mm. About 70-80% of that money was loans. And he said one thing. He said, oh, yeah, it is, don't worry that there are loans. But no single money taken as a loan no. will be used for recurrent expenditure. Yes. Everything is going into capital expenditure. expenditure. And I want, I want us to now you know, segue into strategic planning. Yeah. Um, when you look at, and I want to now compare Enugu and Abia to one side as against others, yeah. um, without any disrespect to Governors Uzodema, um, Wifuru, and Soludo, when you look at the activities of Governor Mba and Governor Oti, um, you can, it almost looks as if they had a plan and a calendar before they entered. Yes. Like they knew exactly where, yes. they, knew exactly where they were going. There, there are no deliberations about what to do next. Everybody knows what to do next and where they are going next. Um, so what, what is this thing now that... What is, is it that the other governors are not planning? Why is it that you walk into a bar every two weeks? I mean, I literally did twice in a month, and I literally saw the difference. So what, what is it that the, about the planning? Is it that Southeastern governors have an issue with strategic planning? Or is it that there's no synergy with other stakeholders? First of all, I think it's uh, the thing with synergy, you know, coming together, uh, taking a decision. You know, a couple of times we talk about the Southeast uh, reintegration. Mm -hmm. You understand? And uh, this is the time for it. I think this uh, Governor's Forum of the Southeast should come together, have like mm -hmm. a retreat, have strategic sessions, bring in people of repute and uh, entrepreneurs. You know, Konji Wala once mentioned that there should be a uh, Southeast Entrepreneurship Conference or meeting where you bring in people of means to discuss. And in Aba, we saw Michael Obara's uh, Eastern Nigeria. Yeah. You notice that uh, in the, even in the sports club leadership, same like Enugu, yeah. you've had people from Anambra, Delta, from Enugu, Rivers. from Awaibom, <laughs> and that have been <laughs> presidents yeah. or chairman of the sports club, which shows that uh, it's a strong institution mm. that they build up, and that is where you come and network. But what also I notice in Aba is that uh, Governor Oti has involved people that were born there, mm. 
people that have made impact mm. people that have uh, uh, started something you know they're quite entrepreneur mm. and it's going to beg them like you saw the uh, the chairman the Abano, chairman Abano, local Ide, government uh, John Udabala, who I've known since 1988, you know, as a very young person, and he's made him the chairman. You know, when you say mayor, he's a, he's a chairman yeah, of Abano. Yeah, mayor of Abano. Yeah, mayor of Abano. And mm. he has gone to these people to appeal to them. I know you don't have the time, but I see what you're doing with your business. Come and be like um, a supervisor over this thing. You're not looking for our money. I just want you to watch over this money and make sure that the loans that he said that are going to be involved in the projects, that they are channeled well into, the right, places. into the right places. And these are men of repute that have done business. I mean, from 88, he was already in business. We saw this car in his place. What was it again? Yeah, Bentley Continental. Yes, and, that, and, and he was 26 the, the then 92 Bentley Continental, yes. when he bought that car. That shows you the level of business this man. So this, this brings in something, because one of the most neglected tiers of government is the local government. We always seem to stop our presidency and government. And perhaps the quality of leadership at local government, mm. if, if maybe we should address that even in... Because we look at the fact that um, at different functions, whether it's the Abbas Club, whether it's everywhere, anywhere else, you've always had um, presence and um, input or management done by either the mayor of Abano, Abbas out or Obingwa. Obingwa. Right. It, it's always, and they are very, very involved. And, and, and you it, notice, they always mention. The yes, of them. always. So it means that there's some strategic policies. Stay with this strategic planning of one, quality of mayors in Abba, um, and what they are doing at that level of governance. Mm -hmm. Because that is the level, because I, 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 I keep telling people that if we were a proper federation, some local government elections will be a, a, a brass, places like brass, they are local government elections will be hotter than the presidency. Yes, of course. <laughs> because of, course. of what they are sitting on. Yeah. Yeah. And we look at the fact that, um, and now to relate it to other states, they in Abanot, we look at the, the influence the mayor is having on the new area area markets. Because it's that edifice is property, not of Abia State, but of Abanot local government. <laughs> it's, yes. it's ridiculous how mind such a mighty mind, product mind boggling and the, the state has literally said oh we're going to support we're going to assist oh public partnership private partnership fine okay. we'll use our name but it's your own it's your own is it not something the other southeast states need to emulate maybe local government chairman in other states need to go beyond motor park togri and market um, revenue raising and uh, double taxation and double taxation Okay, let me come in here. Uh, if you notice, a uh, couple of governors don't like dealing with the local government elections. Mm. They appoint TC chairman. And I appeal, even when you're going to appoint a TC chairman, you know, appoint somebody of repute, mm. somebody of means, so that your revenue is kind of kept because if you bring in hungry people obviously they are gonna try to accumulate some money well, yeah. to go for elections anytime they call elections you know and and if you watch the way alex oti is handling these people we went to the new area area we went on uh, this building that has a panoramic uh, the elevator. Lift, uh, the elevator. I mean, <laughs> you see, in, and, 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 in and a local government. I mean, so let's now bring this back to strategic planning again. Yeah. Because you mentioned the quality of people you bring in. So when um, the, the gentleman who is working on the market, the market developer, mm -hmm. um, that's Mr. Henry Okorafo, Henry Okorafo. who, who um, will I say, not ironically, but who coincidentally is the man who builds the new terminal of the Uyo airport. Yes, of course. So when you, bring in, when you bring in someone like that and he tells you your market needs this, you have somebody who understands and says, the way I, agree. I agree, we need this. Why, why does the plaza in the market need an elevator? Because somebody could be selling heavy stuff on the top floor. Yes. You don't need, you don't, you, you, it's, it, it should have. You see, these people, I think what they are trying to do is to turn everywhere into a more like yeah, a more, yes. 
to be fair, he did yeah. say that that yeah. the shopping mall experience to the point where yeah. even the pathways between yeah. um, plazas will be covered. Yeah. So that even when it's raining, yeah. you can go to markets. You're, you're inside <laughs> the market. <laughs> like what you see in Dubai? Yeah, with Dubai, even in China. But with policies, yeah. with all the new things coming up, I would like to see policies like uh, uh, enacting a law for yeah. public buildings, you know, to accommodate the, less pre um, uh, the disabled people, yeah. which you see in Dubai. Before you uh, uh, certify any place, it must yes. have... You but know, I mean, like the, the, the presence of elevators here has solved that problem. Yes. Because they don't have to use staircases. Yes, yes, of course. And it, it's big enough. Yeah. You know, it's the over... But you, but you must have the ramp. The, oh, so the, 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 the good thing is to, but get, Anambra, to get to the elevator so, sorry, has the ramp. Anambra has that law. Has put in that law on the Obiano, even before the federal government. Yeah. I think the federal government enacted their own six months after. Okay. So, you know, so I think all the state governments in the South is, let's do something with that difference. Let's not look at the others. Mm. And I was going to say, there's agitation for this or that. There's something that came and didn't become. The agitation is now driving us into different... You see what happens in the South is on Mondays, the yeah. amount of revenue loss. But I say to people, a place like Catalonia in Spain, has been asking for independence. Have they, they've not been awarded that or given that. But they went into themselves. Best infrastructure, best architecture, best place to stay. Barcelona is the capital. They've of had the, the, the Olympics there. Um, they have one of the world's most recognizable football teams. What are you talking one about? One of the most recognized Euro basketball yes, teams. Yes, and So it, let us in the, same in the Spain, South East create this thing for ourselves. So I agree with what you said. In the same Spain, you have the Basque people also asking for um, independence. Mm. And at a point in time, you had ETA yeah, 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 bombing yeah. trains in Madrid and doing things like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they've since adopted the, will I say, Catalina strategy. Yes. And, and what you have is they faced holiday and hospitality <laughs> rather than... Do you, know, <laughs> do you know, last time I heard what Governor Soludo plans to do mm -hmm. along the coastline, it's an audacious, uh, audacious. I mean, Anam uh, people don't even know that Anambra has beautiful beaches. We have beaches. <laughs> people don't even know that. Yeah, I, I, I know the gentleman <laughs> in charge of the uh, planning, you know, mm. uh, and what they have on mm. paper is awesome, but is to put it to mm. practice. Mm. And in the southeast, we can create a heaven of tourism. Look at Inugu. Look at the Henneke Lake. Mm. Look at all the lakes mm. surrounding this place. Look at Apuke. Look at, I mean, we were born here. I was born in Enugu at the Parkland Hospital. And we know what we have seen. In Dubai, you buy sand. Late Ubon King said he went and paid $250 to see pink sand. And he said, Is it not the sand at the back of his house that he's paying for? They create things and sell it to Get you. Value. Let's <laughs> and sell value to you. And we have this thing. I'm, gl I'm glad you brought up Anambra. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to do a direct mirror. Because um, we're not talking of the whole of Abia State. So we're going to go into commercial hubs yes. and map about against Onisha. Onisha and, and Newi, Newi, who are supposed to be mm. the powerhouses of industrialization and commerce. Yes. Not just in the Southeast, but in Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria Queen will be right back after this break. The program is Nigeria Quenu here on Afia DSTV channel 254, Go TV channel 17, and of course at Afia TV official on all social platforms, streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. My name is Nam Diobaya, and we are still talking about the rise of Aba and what the rest of the Southeast could learn from Aba. And of course, my guest, who is a well traveled, uh, not just in the Southeast, but around the world, well traveled serial entrepreneur, Ozo. Ojinaka, Kobino, Madweke, and we've been talking about Abba, and now let's do a game of mirror. We put Abba here, we we'll put Anambra here. Abba is one industrial manufacturing commercial hub in Abia. It's a juggernaut of a region. Then you have Anambra, which is blessed with Newi and Onicha in the same state. Newi, widely regarded as the largest spare parts market in Africa, on each other. And uh, there's something about Newe also that is the, what did they say again, uh, per square? Yeah, the uh, most billionaires per square. Per square. Per, uh, per, per person, per family, per, person, per square per meter. Yeah. They produce the most. Then you have Onicha, which is perhaps the largest commercial, uh, largest, oh, probably the largest, 
second largest market. People don't know how large Onitsha market is uh, when you think that the Onitsha market is, the, the city has become a, a single market. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm spreading out. Spreading out. Oba. Into Oba, into Enugu, Enugu Ku, into and, uh, You know, Kwa has been taken already. So it's, Kwa is, 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 is taken, you know, has, has spread that far. Now, you, you now ask yourself, we look at the strategic movements in Aba. We've talked about quality of leadership from the governor to the mayors. And then we look at the association leaders in the market. I mean, uh, there's uh, Mazio Kechuku, who is the uh, chairman of the Leather Products Manufacturers Association of Abia State, Lipmas. And he is telling me how they, as a group now, are even strategizing to lobby the government to let them do bulk purchase of tanned leather. Because those who are tanning the leather and do not prefer to sell abroad so, yeah and they get a lot of low quality leather to work with and they get criticized for low quality work because it's just like our crude oil these people come they buy our best leather but they don't sell us their good sicilian leather mm -hmm. they buy our best then they sell us what we would classify as chaff <laughs> not quality not the best and so there's a problem of getting very good raw materials but we're seeing leadership sitting up and ready to fight it then we're seeing that the power line one line in area area market have actually incorporated themselves so they operate as a single entity mm -hmm. a whole line of leather workers um midsole printers um the, you know everybody in the ecosystem of leather shoe manufacturing the entire power line have incorporated themselves so that they are one body one body so now whether it's legal issues whether it's getting bulk jobs from the government there's a body of influence in there we has people of, with more financial resources, more international connections. And in terms of sheer number, Onicha dwarfs them. Why is it that these major hubs have not been able to implement this kind of strategic thinking we're seeing in Aba? Is it leadership or is it maybe a time that has not yet come? Because we have, when I say leadership, not just government, the leaders in the market. I mean, innocent is in the market in, in Inewi. Yeah. <laughs> so when I say leadership, I'm talking of also the big industrialists in the market. Okay. Um, talking about that, uh, I would have to tell you that the Igbo thing, the old Igbo thing needs to come back to resonate. Whereby you said, Onyaga na one near. Yeah. On Rube one near. Don't leave anybody behind. And you go It was when Iko Tuonya came into, resonated in the Igbo structure, that things started going. So this thing about coming together to forge ahead still needs to come up. Like uh, you mentioned in Osun. I, in my course of travel, I've um, had the course to enter those uh, shuttle cars, you know, that they use to transport you from the terminal building to the aircraft or something like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, but I look at the whole gamut of the innocent thing and uh, I'm like, I happen to know him, if I so. And a couple of times I've mentioned to him, you know, why wouldn't you just concentrate on four out of the whole thing and specialize on them? get it to the roots. Because if you go to some offices, some government agencies, and uh, they are complaining about spare parts. So because of it, they abandon cars that are less than two years old. The spare parts are difficult to get. And government also need to come in mm. to aid these guys. Because we are seeing the Navy as the not the commercial market thing. Only mm. child the, the auto industry. The auto, also yeah, heavy, uh, heavy industries. Yes. In Nibu is our heavy industry In hub. fact, there's nothing that cannot be manufactured in the mm -hmm. Nibu. Mm -hmm. Automobile-wise and machinery-wise. Mm -hmm. Government need to come in to help those people. You understand? T to be fair, mm -hmm. um, I remember when Governor Soludo was entering, and he said um, his <laughs> official car would be innocent. Mm -hmm. Not only is his official car innocent, all the commissioners, all the ambulances, all the... To be fair to Governor Soludo, yeah. in terms of putting his money where his mouth is with regards to that, he did it. Mm. Also notice the same thing with Governor Alex Oti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his official car is an innocent. And I think, I don't know if it's the governor of Gombe, but there's 
I saw that during the inauguration, there's also a northern governor who has innocent cars as official cars. So, but it, so it, uh, credit to these governors. But I'm I'm so big on meritocracy. Mm. What is innocent doing to be the beautiful bride that will force the hand of people that they must use innocent, not because we are helping a local business, mm. but because he's the best around. Well, uh, I wouldn't say he's the best around. Because the other people, there's this guy doing the diesel thing yeah. that is even going to overtake him, you know. Uh, but I think the initial thing was, let us, in carbon kind, yeah. this is our this own. Our own list. But we go beyond in carbon kind, like I was mentioning. We go to the quality you put out there. You don't just bring out something, manufacture something and bring it out for, you know, in carbon kind's sake. Give people what will be durable, what will be comfortable. You understand? Uh, kudos to Soludo and uh, Gosnochi yeah. uh, for using it. But when you acquire it, how long does it last? You? But I mean, you, you mentioned spare parts. Yes. So let me think like an industrialist. Mm. One, I'm not making a car that will break down every day. Yeah. And two, I have to scale my spare parts production with my vehicle production. Yes. Are we creating orders? Our banks giving, I remember um, in the early 2000s, um, I don't want to say, let's just say a popular Korean car company, we purchased a vehicle from that company, and I did it through a bank. Because I saw the advert in Vanguard, <laughs> I'll never forget. Pay this amount every month. I said it's a lie. 2007, I said it's a lie, I went to the bank, and it was true. <laughs> it was true. See? You know, so to get a brand new car and all those things can be done. Yes. The question is, are there strategic structures to aid the heavy industry manufacturers in any way that even people who might not have all the money can acquire these things? I mean, I know they're doing something with the um, um, personalized rider service, your Bolt, Uber, Bolt, Lyft, Uber, and driver. Okay. They were doing cars. Those were for business. Yeah, yeah. So is there something like that for buses, for taxis, for at least start commercially, then privately? for offices, delivery people. Is it, is it that? The, the government and the banks, what are they doing to help these people? Uh, I think those things are there, mm. if you ask me. What is with our people? Because most times there's this uh, mindset. I don't want to deal with banks. I don't want to, you know. But also, their interest rates mm. to borrow is also, if government can help out there. But, um, you see this thing I was talking about? The masses first. If these guys can concentrate on the mass transit, oh. you know, mass transit buses to ameliorate the suffering of the people and uh, the sufferings of the people and, uh, you know, gradually we'll get there. Japan, Korea, you mentioned, didn't just start manufacturing cars and they shot to the top. Yeah. Just like in the music scene, if you uh, see the flavors and the yeah. videos, the, you the, think it's uh, the, the early, easy. The early, the early Toyotas and the Hatsus were the laughing stock of auto shows. <laughs> Just, but now the same GM, but the person, Ford that laughed at them are begging for government policies to protect them from these same Japanese cars. These, these, these guys, you know, because they've come in. They've taken the whole market. And China also. Yeah, it's coming up. So let's let's. Let's talk about um, what, what you mentioned about, you know, um, them coming first to the masses and the issues that can help them. And one major issue that has affected, with regards to lots of small and medium and micro scale enterprises, even to the heavy industrialists, is power. We've seen small shops close down, we've seen big businesses move out. Yes. Recently, after many attempts, Professor Bartonaji has gotten geometric power online. Yeah. Most people don't know that in the same ABBA, just at the end of Fox Road, is the ABBA independent power scheme. So ABBA now has two power uh, stations uh, going on. inside there. Yeah. Now, I was talking to uh, Mr. Okorafu about the power, mm. and he said, yes, everybody's already negotiating. negotiating yeah. And this is how far they are thinking. Because mm. I asked the question, he said, yes, we're well, thinking about that. Which is, instead of um, asking for, oh, well, give us reduced rates and no, geometry true has to make money, right? Of course. So let's it's a let's, business. let's 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 pay for that money you want to make by bulk buying. Yeah. Bulk buy power 
Geometric risk is dropped. Cash flow is... And they can give you ridiculously low rates. Yeah. Because you've paid up front. Yes. So the question now is, people are excited geometric is there. Is it not time for a place like... There are enough people in Inewi, there are enough people in Onecha, hmm. to warrant these markets hmm. to have their own power source. independent power source. Why is that not happening? You're very right. What I say, let us start with the one that we have seen. Hmm. Because the ones we are thinking about is still there. What ABA needs is less than what Geometrics is putting out. Yes. And they are talking about uh, selling to National Grid. National Grid. And I heard that the Southeast governors that have said no, sell to us, we will get. But also, what you're saying, the businessmen in mm -hmm. Onicha, the Newe, need to talk to Soludo. Need to talk to. Need to talk to Soludo. This this geometric power you want, power to, buy, you want to buy, bring please, it into the market. Bring it into yeah, the I market. agree hundred percent. Bring it into the market, because you know, even the politics. You know, politics is local. Yes. After making noise in Lagos, Abuja, New York, London, you come to Umudioka. <laughs> at a few markets, the primary school there. That's where I, I cast my vote, and it is what you get there that you use to power on. Mm. So, bring it to Anicha, bring it to Newi, and let uh, 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 industry spring up again. Let things come back to life, and um, we'll have more productivity. Uh, youths, the teaming youths that are out on the streets, will have more jobs. Yeah. You know the spa uh, uh, supermarket and the shop, right? There are some young people that hang out there. Each time I drive in, I tell my children, if we don't deliberately intentionally do something about the situation these children will come for you i tell my my yeah. children every day they'll come for you yeah. you see when we are marshalling out those thoughts you know we should think about five years from now ten years from no. now batum naja i spoke to him on friday he said everybody's saying give us light and there are some skits being made about light in our by choke somebody doing their hands like this it's gradual I know there's this issue about some sort of, what I call it, sabotage or whatever, you know, with the uh, using of the uh, uh, existing, you know, grid, in, in grid, grid local grid, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he has to do his own. Uh, I also would have thought he would have reasoned it out, you know. You know, the original plan was generation. Yeah. But, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the best things I ever heard is about power mm. came from um, Mr. Femi Otedola. He has given a good power. Mm -hmm. And he said for Nigeria's problem to make it, to solve it, is you need to have situations where, you know, transmission company of Nigeria is federal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are private generators, there are private distributors, there are public-private partnerships for distribution. He said you need to have top-to-bottom private sector value chains for power in some regions. Caution. And I went back and I started thinking about it. If you look at... Um, the problems of, when I say, power distribution. A lot of it lies in the fact that the infrastructure for transmission and even a lot of the staff there are still carryovers from Nepal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that culture is still with them. Public and private is oil and water, with no mm -hmm. disrespect to the public service of days gone by, which both my parents belong to. Oh, well, our parents. <laughs> belong to, you know? No, but <laughs> during our parents' days, it was, it was totally different. During my parents' days, they spent a lot of time complaining. Every day. Complain about the system. Mm. I, I, I think I know so much because of how much they complained. Okay, <laughs> you came from a younger generation. I came from a younger generation, <laughs> but they, they, they were always bitter about the way they, they, they felt like they had been sabotaged at their own jobs. Okay. But not to stay too long on that, you look at uh, MTN, Glow, Nine Mobile, Etel, all these companies, they have been running. Mm -hmm. And then, but it seemed impossible that well, they can get on. When they first started, they came in with their own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. They remember them having recruitment drives, people that schooled abroad, foreigners, you know. And how much? And then, how much was your line? How much did you buy? It your? was expensive there. I mean, my I first, bought for twenty five. Twenty two thousand. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Everyone, you sold for thirty five. Yeah. Sim card. Sim card. Yeah. You buy the SIM card twenty two thousand, then we buy at about eighteen thousand the Alcatel one touch, which somebody would probably dash you now. <laughs> because it's not worth it's not worth three thousand naira. But that's how we bought the phones then. It was two thousand and two, if I'm correct, two thousand and one, mm -hmm, two thousand and two. Mm -hmm. And then you see that you had the 
um, communication no, companies that... Be, be before that, you know. The communication... No, I got mine in... You know, I, the first people were those who did Econet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't do Econet, so we were the next yeah. phase. But you look at the company that came out of NITEL, existing infrastructure, existing staff, protective policies, which was MTEL, 0804, crashed. Totally. And every company since then, they've tried to bring out of it, crashed. Etel <laughs> has had um, have changed them. Econet, Celtel, yeah, 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 but the people have had their lines without problem. Yes, without problem. Yeah, the change of name doesn't. <laughs> the change of name has not affected. Like but from Nitel, every communication company has crashed and burned. So at what point? I'm look at the Abam model now. Maybe because Alex Oti spent all his life in the private sector, and then he, he brings in private sector, big private sector players. And to be local uh, government, and understand. to be local government people. So it seems as if Aba is running <laughs> private sector top to bottom. Okay. Is it not time maybe in the southeast? Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair to um, Governor Mba, for instance, um, even though he did have an early start in public sector, he's had most of his working life in private sector. Is it not time we start having private sector thinking? from top to bottom in states in the southeast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to discuss. Mm. But you see, what brings you to power? Politics. Yeah. So you see, at times, you know, Gopnoti had the same issue yeah. when he wanted to do the Ngwa thing. And you know the story that followed that, Pitamba has had the same thing. So I think these people have uh, taken a decision to put away you know, with all due respect to the politicians, you know, but there are some people that uh, uh, politics is their mainstay, mm. which is very dangerous. Yes. You understand? Those are the people that are the big problems in governance, you know. So you come in with your style and how you want to work. You establish it. You want to deep root it. Then you can now open your hands of uh, fellowship. But between Peter Amba and Alexoti, Alexoti seems to come nearer mm. to the people mm. than Peter Mba. Which, 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 is, which is a bit surprising to me because uh, Alexoti seems like a very amiable, affable person. But in terms of access to Southeastern governors, Peter Amba seems the most accessible. If you are in the business community or in the press, I'm talking from personal experience. I've tried to reach out to all governors. Mm -hmm. um, I think Enugu is the easiest to get, at least to get your message to the governor. To the governor, okay. Yeah, Enugu is the easiest, um, followed by Eboing. Eboing is actually a bit... Yeah. They are very... They are actually also, the, 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 the to guy. some extent, governor, even if you don't get governor, we fool. Whatever you need, if your issue is an issue of or something with the legal system. The Attorney General is probably, I, I think, to be fair, the Attorney General of... I think he's giving quite some powers to his to, yes. I, And the Attorney General of Ebony State, without fear or favor, is probably the most... Okay, well, no. The Commissioner of Enugu State for Information, Aka is the Aka. Aka is the Aka. I think they are... They are, they are a season, yeah. Yeah, they are both the most accessible, well, I say the most accessible politicians mm. in, in, in the Southeast. Mm. But then you look at Anambra and Abia, and in all honesty, there's an issue of accessibility. So how is it that... With this veiled shrine that seems to be between, um, you know, the people, the media, and the governors, mm. Abia State is still getting such good PR. Yes. Uh, from my sojourn, <laughs> I noticed that. I mean, did you see policemen on the streets? No. In one I, week? Actually, in a month, moving about at night in Abia, until you get to Osisioma Junction, um, I don't know. I don't see policemen. Honestly, I didn't see thugs. Yeah. I didn't see policemen. It was the last day as we were leaving our bar, yeah. Sunday morning, that there was this, and they were so courteous. And you ask yourself, how does Alex Oti do this? Mm. That's one thing. I think the Southeast governors need to discuss Oga. How do they do this thing so we can apply it here? But I guess there are different terrains, you know, mm. and uh, different uh, medication for different illnesses, you know. But um, honestly, uh, I, uh, I want to imagine that, uh, you know, a steady meeting of those five guys mm. will help mm -hmm. a lot. Because everybody, mm. Mm. if you check their pedigree, they are not on the same, you know, there are some people that feel they are exposed to the world 
more than any other person. And there are some people that are humble. There are some people that want to learn. I don't know. I, I, is there anybody particular you are referring to when you I, say no, no, some people no, who no, think they no, know the world no, more than no, anybody? But, 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 is, there any, is, there, is, there, is there somebody in like my... Like between both of us, you might be thinking that <laughs> this guy... Let no, me, I don't know. Is, there, I mean, is there a particular governor okay. you have like that? You wouldn't hear that from me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me, but I like what you're saying because yeah. I look at when they had the development agenda of Western Nigeria, Dawn. They even had a mini sports festival, the Dawn Games, mm -hmm. in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the uh, Lagos, Oyo, Ogun, Ekiti, Ondo. Mm -hmm. And they had the Dawn Games. And you now had people from Kwara and Kogi say, that ah, we're also Yoruba now, we should be involved. And, and this stems they from... They want to come on. Yeah, this stems from the thinking of all things like the Odua group, which I always reference, which has Cadbury, Nigerian Bottling Company, Wema Body Estates, mm -hmm. um, Premier Hotel, Kakanfo Inn, Airport Hotel, Ikeja, and they're still, it's still paying till today. So you, you, you look at all these things and we have nothing like that in the Southwest. South. Why? Well, where are South these things? Well, sorry, South, I mean, what, 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 how is Ohanez and Igbo trying to bring people together? Where are the social, cultural, pan Igbo groups? Okay, let me even come in there. Did you notice? that the function that was held for the governor. Yeah. There's a cultural troupe that performed. Yes. They are world renowned now. Enugu Cultural Group. Mm. But Alexoti didn't mind that this is an Enugu Cultural Group. Mm. The myopic thinking of people will say, let us do an Abia thing. But the man wants the best. Mm. He has Enugu people. Has a number of people. The, the mayor, has a bunch of people. The, the mayor of Aba North, it's John Rudabala. It's an Anambra. I'm also bull. It's an Anambra man. And a billionaire. But he's been, he's, 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 his business in Abba is older than me. <laughs> Around four decades ago. His father's in this world. His father's business yes. is older. They know his father. Mm. They started from there so, and handed over to so, him. So maybe the other southeastern states need to stop looking at. Nkanu man cannot do in Nsuka. <laughs> Asaba man oh, Abu, cannot Abu, do in Onicha. Asaba man cannot, cannot do in uh, Onicha. Yes. Um, Newi man cannot do in Ihiala. And Okija man cannot do in Enugu. Maybe we need to start yeah. having opening, a, opening a opening wider. Yeah. Mm. In, there's a Udemon Banugo mm. from Anambra Obosi. Was the first person to get into Enugu House of Assembly from Anambra. And it was a thing to celebrate. The sooner we start opening up and the stop better. this bye bye now, mm. the the term bye bye now, mm. we will open up and develop more. We have two minutes to go, and I'm not going to leave without bringing this up because I know that this is very key. One of the economic drivers we seem to ignore a lot, but it's very important: entertainment, nightlife, hospitality. Oh um, you've seen the. The rush of construction of hotels and entertainment spots in Aba, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's an ancillary service that follows business. We, I know Enugu has seen it in the, the Sullivan years were very popular. Sullivan years were fantastic. Enugu was a hospitality hub. Mm -hmm. Oweri, since I was born, is from my dad's friends I first heard of Oringo City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Oringo. so yeah. you, you, you look at now... Bongo City. But now you look at... What you look at the it seems as if the, the, the business in Aba is driving hospitality now because there's a need for it. What do the South Eastern governors need to do now to ensure? Because I know they'll talk about insecurity and yeah, all that. Yeah, that was gonna go to okay. That. So what, what exactly needs to be done? I think uh, we need to speak about the insecurity first of all, you know. But you see, gradually Pitamba has doused the insecurity, the insecurity thing, the Monday sit at home. So but it's, it's, it's gone beyond it now because people have formed the habit of uh, uh, using Sunday Monday. as Saturday oh. and they're using Monday as, as Sunday. Yeah. Which stalls productivity. productivity. You understand? Mm. So uh, I think we need to get into the group to know that Monday is Monday, Tuesday is Tuesday. I give kudos to the, uh, uh, Governor Pitamba mm. for coming in and having the courage to blaze forth and other southeastern mm. states, unless some of, them, of the governors using it for politics mm. to hold people in check. No, but I mean, to, to be fair, um, the first governor to go bullet for bullet with the curators of sit at home was Governor Opus Odima. And at that time, we actually criticized him for using sledgehammers to kill flies. Mm. But, uh, uh, but I don't think he really went about it the right way. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, well, I know. mean, we might have our on what, but 
we can't deny that he did try. He Meta tried. could have been run. He tried. But I'm just trying to key into what you said that maybe instead of one one, there should be a collective yeah. Southeast agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To because it, it's it's the equal 2010 yeah. that is making. I mean, Igwebike, mm. when you come together and the nightlife you are talking about, yeah. you know, Enugu is uh, tried. A lot of hotels are coming up. A lot of uh, eat trees. You know, when we were young, we didn't used to eat outside, you know. So Enugu was known as uh, uh, civil servant town. Oh. But now everything has changed. Mm. Same just like the whole of the southeast, you know. And in Abba, you saw the Ibiza hotels. You saw the Enitonia of way it's back. Way back. You know. Uh, uh, Oris Hotel. Oris, hotel Oris, 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 Oris uh, Night uh, Oris Club. Night, yeah, luxury you know. City. So luxury. many of them. So many. And so many. And, and Ibiza on this side of the road. And doing a major project on the other side of the road. Yeah. So that means things are good. Because they are having quality people coming from business. From Angola. From Mozambique. Be, from but, Tanzania. From Ghana. From, from Ghana. Yeah, from, from everywhere. Yeah. And they would need to have luxury. It's mm. not all about... You know, you, you have to enter. Okay, look at Panyu. Look at Panyu. Oh my goodness, we went there and we were shocked. You know, you guys weren't on that. Uh, you will, guys I'm went to always Ngwa, Ngwa Road. I'm you always know, walking. You know, <laughs> to go and check out the uh, fa uh, fabric people. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, uh, something that they, are, like I said, they should have sessions together. Mm -hmm. Like have a master plan for the Southeast. Mm -hmm. Notice where each person has strength. And, Mr. Namdi Obanya, you have the strength of doing seaside resorts. Why don't you concentrate on it? Let me do this. Oh. Let this other person do this. And before you know what is happening, from uh, Oweri to Enugu, to Abia, to Abakaliki, to uh, Onicha. Onicha. It's one place. If you're mm. driving from the bridgehead from Asaba, everything is mm. everything is Wait, th th This discussion we will have to continue because we run out of time and there's still so much more to discuss. Yes, so much. But I know we'll definitely. I can I commit you to a continuation of this discussion. Please, I will, I will appreciate because I I still have. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine our time is gone. So if you, if you know anything there's about so much, if you know anything about the Ozo title, you know that Ozos don't tell lies. So this this is this com this uh, commitment. Is going to happen, and thank you so much to all of you who joined us. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ozo Madweke, for being here with thank us. You, thank Nigeria you so Quenu will be back next week, Friday, with another exciting episode. That, of course, Afia between now and then will be every and anywhere you need us to be. But don't go anywhere, you know, that's the best place to be on the weekend is Afia. And still comes up later today. There's still the Eastern Eye and so much more. So stay with Afia 254 DSTV 17 Go TV at Afia TV official all our online platforms and of course streaming live youtube facebook i'm anam diobaya have a very very fantastic weekend yes.